more retail investors lose money in stock market than actually making money. Source, University of Oxford. Retail investors were exploited not only because big investors are exploitative, but also because retail investors are unable to compete with informed, sophisticated traders or investors, even in a perfect market. Biologically, the human brain is not designed to succeed in investing because it is designed for survival. Investing failures isn't really due to lack of knowledge or ability to control emotions. When you are built for survival, your brain is hardwired to conserve energy by being lazy. Success is the exact opposite. Success is expanding energy, taking risks and doing uncomfortable things. In modern society, money equals survival. Losing all our money, getting rejected by a woman can feel like dying. So when you panic after seeing your stocks drop, it is your self-preservation instinct kicking in. Or when you hesitate to invest, or when you procrastinate. Know that there is nothing wrong with you. It actually means you have a perfectly functioning, healthy, normal human brain. Human is not the strongest, the biggest, or the fastest on earth. Why the heck you think we are the most successful species? Because of our survival instinct up here. But the very same advantage that makes human race survive for thousands of years is also the same weakness that we have to deal with when it comes to investing our own money. Success in investing is not normal. Success is doing the things that many people would not do where we risk our own survival, aka losing money, or even die in the process. When you truly want success in life, in a career or a business. There is no other way but to hack and disrupt and ultimately rewire the neural pathways in your brain. So we become totally comfortable in taking risks. Oops, not like that lah. First time of doing anything. Sure, it feels scary, but after doing it for 100 times, now it feels like a walk in the park because the neural pathways inside your brain has been successfully rewired. And if you still feel stuck after trying investing on your own, you may use this framework to decide whether to quit investing altogether. First step, ask why you want to quit. Is it just hard or the thing that you are doing just plain sucks now? If it's just hard, then the next question to ask is, is the challenge worth the potential reward? Example, your toaster goes kaput. Do you fix it on your own or you just buy another one for 100 ringgit? But if it is just because it plain sucks, then do you believe it is within your capability to make it not suck? If no, then quit. Example, toxic corporate culture. You cannot change it and it's giving you emotional damage. Then quit. But if your answer is yes, then hang on to it a little longer. Perseverance and grit, man. Knowing when to quit, when to change direction, when to leave a toxic situation, when to give up on something that wasn't working. And move on. It's a very important skill. Contrary to popular opinion, quitting is for winners. Imagine a fish that never quits its whole life trying to climb a tree, whereas it should focus on being the fastest no, 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 swimmer no. instead. Eh, apa ni? But then after you quit investing, what to do next? People are talking about inflation eating our money value away. You can't help but feel dilemmatic. See below in the description how our clients solve it. When you lose less money in investment, you automatically make more money from it. And when you spend less money in investment, you have more time to focus on earning money using your skills and expertise, which turns into having more money or capital to invest. Here is the next relatable video you will enjoy.